a log cabin on Lake Superior because that's where I lived. I wanted two four-wheel drive vehicles, and I wanted world peace. He just messed you up then, didn't he? <laughs> so there I was, and I mean, in, in anger, and I say that because it wasn't like God came and got me because I was pristine. I was there. So how much of me was there? People always ask that. All of me. All of me was there. I, I sensed everything about him. So there are experiences like what you're right. like what you're saying where you make the choice to go. But in this one, it was I was summoned. I was okay. there. I looked at him and he his breathing, one of the things that was best about being with God is, you know, I I he would breathe out and, and that's what I wanted. I wanted to get as close to his breathing as I could. If you could, if you could see smoke, if it would have been smoke, I wanted all that. I wanted to breathe in, and it wasn't through my nose. I wanted to breathe. I wanted to get as much of the breath of God in me. And now, being a Christian, understanding because I got saved in that vision, I met him. I I knew him. I I came out of that vision. I am his favorite. Mm. He did this for me. I am wow. so important. I am the bride of Christ forever. Right, right. I want to be his. And I was, I was, for lack of a better word, totally lovesick. Mm. I had never encountered the love of a man of anyone. Right, like that. In that experience, what I saw was light shooting out of every one of his pores. And it was such a brilliant light that came off of his being there in that it was uh, my eyes didn't my, my heart couldn't see the extents of the color that I've seen since then okay. going I think because I was just this new little Christian it was a white light a blinding white light did you see other people there in that experience no there was yes oh, I, I was smoking three and a half pack cigarettes a day before I went to heaven okay I was on depression medicines, and I don't recommend people stop, just sure. stop taking it, but I was done, and I knew everything about me had changed. And I used to be more of a quiet, shy, wait to find out what you think, and you know, try and build a bridge between you and me, not anymore. So I wasn't ready for hell. I, I, it, I would jump over those parts in the Bible because they weren't for me. I, I'm God's favorite. It's not going to happen to me. And uh, so I want, I want to first say, Jennifer, that if anyone wants uh, the whole testimony, they can go on my website and yeah. get it because I don't want some. I, I want people to say www.myfathersreputation.com. Okay. And um, so it was, a, it, was, it, was a, it was a prayer day. We meet as an evangelism community. It was a prayer day. And... I got there, and I knew the angels were there. My boss, uh, he said, whenever you know that the angels are here, come let me know. So I went to him. I said, the angels are here. They, you know, I don't know why they were coming, but there were angels that were coming, and I thought, somebody's going to get blessed. I was thinking, somebody's going to go to heaven. And um, so I ran to get a CD. I come back, and they, there were more angels there. Well, the worship started. I was in the back at the sound machine, and... Um, so at the front of the room, there was a fireplace. Not that that's important, but it was, there's just a fireplace at the front of the room. And the fireplace broke, and it turned into two doors, and the doors swung towards me. Wow. And a whole realm on the other side of that fireplace was right there. And a hand without fingers, uh, for lack of a better word, like a dart or a straw or something like that, bam, and it grabbed me right here. And I could see where I was going and, and the panic of trying to get there. I, I, I contorted my body to stop this something that had, had hold of me. Bam! And it just sucked me through that. And I knew it was hell. I knew when it opened that it was hell. And when I went through those the fireplace doors, for lack of a better understanding, slammed shut. And I, I ended up in a place that God never intended for one human being. He doesn't want us to see this place. You know, the Bible has a lot of, the Bible has a lot of things to tell us about this place. And so when I got there, um, I knew people are going to go there every day. I love West. 
you know, who don't listen. They don't want to listen. And I knew when I got there three things right away. I knew I am in hell eternally for unforgiveness. And the scripture in Matthew 18 was so alive. I knew it. I could, I, I understood it. I knew that if you don't forgive your brother from your heart, the same thing is going to happen to you. And it, there it was. It was happening to me. And, and as I told you, the peaceful God, the patient God was done. I knew that he had rent his garments and that there was, there was no appeal. And eternally, eternally, I was just separated from him. So I was trapped in a flame. And I, I contorted and twisted and turned, and the flame kept burning me. And you know, there were so many aspects of hell that were um, so painful. I saw other people. I saw so many people. You know, you lose your image. You don't get to stay looking like a human being because this is the image of God. And God is not in hell, and there's no trace of all of it. And... I, I, I knew it could have been avoided if I had only, if I had only obeyed God, God. You know, people talk about, I'm fine, I'm good. Mm -hmm. Everything's fine, but you know, if you say somebody's name, and you have that feeling like, I don't like them. I don't want to be around them. When you have that, that is what a bitter heart is. That is what unforgiveness is. And bitter people won't, won't enter the kingdom of God. And it's, 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 it's overwhelming that every day people are going there. And you know, in the times that I was in heaven, in the times that I was in hell, there are more people in hell. Wow. Than oh. what were in heaven. You know, because you yeah. knew things. I knew things when I was in hell. And what I knew was that... My family was there. Like which family? Today I can't tell you which family. Um, you know, when I came back, I, I, for lack of a better understanding, I was insane for six days. And um, I, my physical body has been sick dealing with all of the things from hell that, that hurt me while I was there. And so I waited and waited because it doesn't matter what you think. It doesn't matter what I think. God, why did you send me now? And I waited 30 months waiting to hear the voice of God because I, I, that was taken away from me when I, when I came back. I couldn't hear him. And after I waited 30 months, it was exactly to the day. He said, I sent you to hell because I love you. And I understood two things. If, I, if God had not helped me, I would, I would, if I die, I would still be there because... I was, I was a person in church, talking in tongues, filled with unforgiveness. Wow. And you cannot go to heaven with that. It's not allowed. The, the gates won't open for you. There's, there's a different resting place for those who won't forgive their brother. Right. I had heard that forgiveness is, I give up my right to hurt you back, and that is such a lie right out of the pit of hell. It has nothing to do with my rights. It has to do with the Savior who died on a cross that forgave me. And from that place... If you won't forgive, you won't be forgiven, period. Yeah. You know, it's just like the Lord's Prayer. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those. And I knew, I knew, I just didn't want to deal with the hurt. And, and I, you know, you need help. You need somebody to sit down and, and you can say, this is what happened to me. And your, your friend, your pastor, your accountability partner can say, you know, okay, now let's forgive this person. And even though it hurts and even though it feels like you can't do it, Jesus will help you. But the, but the alternative is, I'm just not going to do it. Somehow God's going to make a new rule for me. And there was no new rule. And the multitudes of people that I heard there and the screaming that was going on. I mean, I, when I think too long about it, when I think about the screaming that's going on, the noise in heaven and the noise in hell are two very, very different things. It just it fills you with so much fear and, and hate. I mean, hell is filled with hate. Wow. God is not there. Find Jesus. Find Jesus in, in your life. Find Jesus. Go talk to somebody who knows him. Ask the Lord God. Lord, if, if I have unforgiveness in me, 
help me. You I need to understand there's a heaven and a hell. But if you don't go to heaven, you will go to hell. And if you break God's laws, his rules, the eternal separation is, is so frightening. He didn't make that place for you. He made it for demons. And so many people are going to hell. If you have a loved one that you love that doesn't know Jesus, go tell them before it's too late. Because your family, your friends, your neighbors, there's a reason why God put you with them. is so that they can be with him. Church, we're supposed to fight against, against the darkness. We should be able to walk up to the gates of hell and it not overcome us. Go get your family for Jesus. Help them. Praise the Lord. I know there's people sitting in here and in the sound of my voice, you have unforgiveness in your heart. And I was, when I saw that, I was hoping it, I know my preaching hasn't done it, but I'm hoping that something in what she said to you will change your heart and you'll get out of unforgiveness and quit holding odd against your brother and your sister. Hell's not worth it. I've been there too. Hell is not worth it. And you can say that's just a bunch of bunk or whatever you want to, but it is the absolute truth. Hell is really real. Uh, you know, you don't want to forgive anybody, but what about when G what, everybody, what everybody did to Jesus when he got beat and had to carry his cross? And every time one of us do not, we disobey one of his commandments, we do the same thing to him over and over and over again. We crucify him. Um, I say it all the time and I'll say it tonight. If somebody's hurt hurt you, you need to forgive them. They're not worth going to hell over. And the sad thing is that you won't forgive them. You'll be in hell, but they'll ask God to forgive them and they'll be in heaven. How terrible would that be? And you don't have, in the meantime, while you're walking in unforgiveness, I'm hearing God say slander and hurt. You know, you're not even happy. And the person you you won't forgive, they might not be happy at that moment, but I can guarantee you God's going to keep working with them until he gets them where he wants them to be. So I'm going to teach you about unforgiveness tonight. Father, I truly do thank you here tonight. I thank you and I praise you. I give you all honor and all glory for this young lady you took to hell and then sent back to give us the message. I thank you, Father God, that you're here tonight in, in all of your glory. And Father God, you gave us the praise and worship so we could understand what you're all about. And Father, if there's anybody in the sound of my voice that is walking in unforgiveness, I'm asking you right now to open up their, their heart wide, Father God, and let them receive this salvation message. And Father God, let them then turn around and do the things you've called them for to do. And Father, we thank you for your Holy Spirit that's here tonight, your angelic host that's here, walking among, amongst us and changing, rearranging us, Father. And Father, I thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. I will not send you another prophet. I will not send you another video about unforgiveness. You have heard my word being taught over and over again about unforgiveness. You have read in my word about unforgiveness. This is my last time to come and woo you into my place of repentance for the unforgiveness that you hold in your heart. The hate, the hate is so deep. There's no way you'll ever see the gates of heaven. I want the hate, I want the unforgiveness. I wanna keep you from the backlash of your own emotions. Turn to me this night. Receive me in all my fullness. 
receive who I truly am and walk in unforgiveness. I'm tugging at your heartstrings tonight, but I'm not going to come and tug ever again. Thank you, Father. Matthew chapter 6, verse 12 says, <clears throat> excuse me, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. See, they're saying, as I forgive others and God, you forgive me. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. For if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. Forgive you, period. But if you do not forgive men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. And I don't care who rewrites the Bible. I don't care how they word it. This is Jesus speaking, and he means exactly what he says. We've all been hurt. We've all walked in ignorance. The, the church has not been taught the truth, and they've been the church has been teaching that you can do whatever you want to do, and, and you'll still go to heaven, and that's not true. If you don't follow the commandments of God, you're not going to heaven. All right, this is God speaking. Somewhere along the way, my children have gotten lost in their love walk. They cannot forgive what others have done to them. See, it also involves love. And I'm, I watch people who are walking in pure hate. They have no love. They talk that they do, but they really don't. And their hate just spews out of, over everybody they come in contact with. They cannot forgive what others have done to them, but they think they have the best love walk going. And God says the, this false delusion must stop, and it must stop right now. I have not called you to hold on to unforgiveness, but somewhere along the way you have convinced yourself that I have. You want me to forgive you at every turn, but you do not give the same measure of grace to those around about you. God said, what kind of witness are you when you walk around with unforgiveness and bitterness in your heart of hearts? And you can really put on all the faces you want to put on. But I'm going to tell you that unforgiveness, that hate in your heart is going to come forth and show everybody just exactly who you truly are. Matthew 18, 21 and 22, then 33 and 35. Then Peter came to him and said, Lord, how often shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him? Up to seven times, Jesus said to him, I do not say to you up to seven times, but up to 70 times seven, should you not also have had compassion on your fellow servant, just as I had pity on you? 70 times seven, and they say that's in one day. And his master was angry and delivered him to the tortures until he should pay all that was due to him. So my heavenly father also will do to you if each of you from his heart does not forgive his brother his trespasses. God said, you say with your lips that you forgive, but it never comes from the very core of your heart. And this is why th there remains an open door for the adversary to operate through. And I can guarantee you there's people sitting in here and sound of my voice that you're around people that are very hateful and not, they're not loving at all. They say they are, but they really are not. And to be around them really bothers you. It's because of the darkness that's in them. It really grieves your soul. You can't even convince them that they're walking in, in hate. They have themselves so convinced, or the enemy has them so convinced that they are right in your wrong. Do you understand, God said, do you understand that I have said he is just waiting for the crack to crawl through? Well, you keep your crack open when, and he comes and goes as he pleases. Let's read that again, and we're going to start with you, say with your lips, Brett. You say with your lips that you forgive, but it never comes from the very core of your heart. And this is why there remains an open door for the adversary to operate through. 
Do you understand that I have said he is just waiting for the crack to crawl through? Well, you keep your crack open and he comes and goes as he pleases. God said, it matters not how many deliverances you receive. Listen to this to you who think you can be delivered from this. It matters not how many deliverances you receive. As long as you have bitterness and unforgiveness in your heart of hearts, you will never get free. We can do deliverance on you till you're, we rub you blue in the face. But as long as you have that unforgiveness in you, you say, well, why am I not free? You guys don't know what you're doing. No, you're not free because you're holding unforgiveness and bitterness in your heart. God said, I have made the way of escape through the blood of my son, Jesus, and you use it, but you do not use it for forgiveness. Why? Why do you use the blood just when it is convenient? My son Jesus was a scapegoat, and you dare not use his blood as a scapegoat. Now, scapegoat is someone who is punished for the errors of others. God said, I have dealt extensively with my body about forgiveness. Where were you when this was going on? You are right here listening, but in your mixed up emotions, you convinced yourself that you are not the guilty one and you swept those emotions of unforgiveness to the back of your mind and continued on with your journey, never understanding that you were more bound than the one that you won't forgive. You see that you are more bound than the one that you won't forgive. When I was first born again, you know, uh, my husband, we, you know, he, he was just really not very good. And I was told that if I didn't forgive him totally and completely, that I would go to hell. And I just couldn't believe that. It took the pastor three months to convince me of that. But the day that I realized that what she, uh, you know, I read the word, the day that I realized what she said was true, I truly forgave him and a big burden lifted off my shoulders. And I don't hold unforgiveness against anybody. I might get upset with what somebody does to me, but I take it to the Father and say, Father, don't let me go into unforgiveness. You never know when the enemy is going to trip you up and, and cause you to die. And you have this unforgiveness in your heart, you're going straight to hell, just like she said. Did you hear she said her family was in hell? All right, my son is a perfect example of forgiveness of heart. He forgave all on the cross and he cried out, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. When those words were spoken, you were all forgiven. Now let's just stop there. I was talking about my husband. You know, when I found out I had to forgive him, then when he would do things again, I would say, Father, forgive him because he really doesn't know what he's doing. And one day God said, don't you ever pray that prayer for him again. He knows exactly what he's doing. He calculates out every move he's going to make. Don't ever pray that for him. Do you know where he's at? He's in hell and he thought he was going to heaven. And I watched him when he died. And I watched how... The, the very life was sucked out of him and all he was was a skeleton and I had to tell the, his children that he was in hell and they were upset but you know somewhere along the line you've got to understand the truth has to be told to you and you have to understand you can't play with God this man was convinced he was going to heaven I was too I wasn't married to him anymore but I, I thought that too all right, Luke 23, 34 says, Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they do, and they divide his garments and cast lots. Are you or are you not just like my son Jesus? Do you act like my son Jesus? Do you love the unlovable at all times or just when you feel like it? Step into newness of life tonight and forgive as I forgave and put all of your trust totally and completely in me at all times. Step into newness of life tonight and forgive as I forgave and put all of your trust totally and completely in me at all times. 
You see, there is never one instance in your life when you are permitted to hold unforgiveness against another. My son paid the ultimate price so you could do all that I ask you to do and go forth undaunted in this cold, dark world and free others from the snare of the fowler. Children, do not abort your assignments. You have worked so hard to get to, to this place where you are at right where you are at right now, and there is absolutely nothing worth losing your crown over. God spoke to me one night when I was walking down there teaching. He said, let no man steal your crown. Don't let other people cause you to get unforgiveness or, or anything that's not of God because they're trying to steal your crown. You need to stay in obedience to what God's telling you to do. It doesn't matter what other people are telling you to do. Many times my own family tells me, I don't understand why you don't make them pay for what they did to you. I'm not their judge. God will vindicate me. I'm supposed to love and forgive. Are you listening? I'm just going to give this little testimony. You know, my, I've always loved rings. And I've always had beautiful rings. Some were given to me, some were made especially for me, some I purchased. Well, a member of my family stole them all. And I really have to work really hard at keeping forgiveness in my heart for that person. And then stupid rings are not worth going to hell over. But every time I put a ring on, you know, I call them my cheaper rings now, I think about that and I have to immediately rebuke that and, and repent and forgive them. What is, it that, what is it that you're holding on to? And I really don't even want to hold on to that, but you know, it, it, so they must have been an idol. And so I have to get this, and, and I know this and I'm working on this. I have to get this idol broken or it could take me to hell. I don't, I, you know, I don't really get upset at the person but the thought keeps coming to my mind, and that's the enemy. And I have to keep getting rid of that thing. Revelation 3.11 says, Behold, I am coming quickly. God, this is God speaking. Jesus, behold, I am coming quickly. I ha Hold fast what you have, that no one may take your crown. Each one of you sitting here tonight, if you're really, truly sold out to God, if you're really, truly walking with God, the devil has somebody every day to come and try to get you upset so he can steal your crown. And then at that given moment, he'll snuff the life out of you and you'll go to hell. I mean, yeah, come on, we live it. If you're not living it, well then maybe you're not walking close enough. <laughs> because I'm going to tell you right now, everybody's walking close to God is going through the worst hell they've ever gone through. We're going through battles we never thought we'd even get close to us and we have to keep working on our salvation every day God said despite what the world states that you have a right to do my word tells you otherwise and my word is the final word in every given situation that comes into your life God has two people in my life God has said I don't want you to have anything else to do with them they're in my hands. You stay totally out of their life. It hurt because I didn't want to stay totally out of their life, but I have to be obedient to God or I could go to hell. Are you understanding this? Others just think I'm being ignorant, but that's not true. I have to obey what God's telling me. See, I disobeyed and that's why I got this problem. And so I, I have learned a lesson. You obey God because if not, there's a bigger consequence waiting for you. Luke 6, 27, Jesus speaking, but I say to you who hear, love your enemies. Love who? Right. Your enemies, some of you don't, didn't quite get this, so I'll repeat it. Your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. And pray for those who spitefully use you. 
to him who strikes you on the one cheek, offer the other cheek also. And from him who takes away your cloak, do not withhold your tunic either. I'm going to stop there. One day I said, God, I don't have a cheek anymore. How many felt like that sometime? They about beat your cheek to death. But, you know, you keep on going because you're walking with a father who's a father of love. Verse 30 says, Give to everyone who asks of you, and from him who takes away your goods, do not ask them back. I have been tested in every area. They come and take my money and steal it. And See, I'm not supposed to ask for it back. Isn't that what it says? Lost my place. All right, verse 31 said, And just as you want men to do to you, you also do to them likewise. I do want people to forgive me if I mess up. Verse 32, but if you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners love those who love them. And if you do good to those who do good to you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners do the same. And if you lend to those whom you hope to receive back, see, this is another thing. What credit is that to you? For even sinners lend to sinners to receive as much back. You know, if you lend something to somebody, don't expect it back. You gave it to them, let them have it. I don't care what they use it for. You're like the homeless. You want know, to stop and give them a $20 bill. I, and my daughter says, they're going to go buy drugs. I says, I don't care. Because they departed my heart to give that to them. I don't care what they do for it, to, with it. That's totally up to them. You worked hard for it. That's okay. God will supply for, for even sinners led to, led to sinners to receive much back. Verse 35, but love your enemies, do good and lend, hoping for nothing in return, and your reward will be great, and you will be sons of the Most High. For he is kind to the unthankful and evil. Verse 36, therefore be merciful, just as your Father also is merciful. Judge not, and you shall not be judged. Condemn not, and you shall not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Give, and it will be given back to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over will be put into your bosom. For with the same measure that you use, it will be measured back to you. Did you hear all that? Matthew 6, 27 through 28, uh, 38. Maybe you need to go home and read that again at your own leisure where you can do it slower and let the words get into your spirit. God said, heads up, little ones. Life is not going to get any better. I believe you do not understand that this is the final battle. It is the battle of Armageddon, and many will stumble and fall if they are not in the agape love walk that my word tells you about. Who was it went to heaven and God said what he's going to ask you when you go there, when you die and go there, did you learn to love? And if you didn't learn to love, he's going to turn you away. And if you really learn to love, then you're, you are, you'll know how to forgive. And you will start praying for your enemies. I just went through a battle with that. I didn't want to pray for them people. <laughs> Come on now. I got enough on my plate without you coming along and causing me problems. And now I got to pray for you. I got over that and that hump. And I started praying for them. And guess what? The enemy can't use them against me anymore. Are you listening here? Sometimes we cause our own problems because we won't forgive. And if you won't forgive, God can't forgive you. And God can't bless you. So we're, we are our own worst enemy at times. And we blame it on everybody else. Jesus always made forgiveness a priority. This is a very crucial time for the body of Christ. The enemy is on a direct path of destruction. Guard your hearts this day and do not allow even one bit of unforgiveness to be placed in your heart. 
Keep the heart pure and clean. Keep the heart of Christ forever in your bosom. And you will not fall prey to the enemy forces that are raging round about. Something's going on in my life right now. And somebody said to me today, what's wrong with you? Are you totally nuts? I wasn't answering what they wanted. I wasn't answering what they were talking to me about. And they said, I know that you're going to go do opposite what I'm telling you. And I didn't say nothing because I don't know what I'm going to do yet. It depends on what the father says. And you're not my father. I love you dearly, but you're not my father. And I have to be about the father's business. All right. Mark eleven twenty five, Jesus said, and whenever you stand praying, if you have anything against anyone, forgive him, that your Father in heaven may also forgive you your trespasses. But if you do not forgive, neither will your Father in heaven forgive your trespasses. Could this be why your prayers are not being answered? Most of us have love hate relationships with forgiveness. Most of us have love-hate relationships with forgiveness. We love the idea of forgiveness when it, when it comes to God forgiving us. And we love the idea of forgiveness when it comes to other people forgiving our shortcomings. But we have a relationship with forgiveness when it comes to forgiving other people. Forgiveness means more than simply letting go of an offense. Forgiveness actually involves wanting the best for those who have offended you. It's not only letting go of an offense, but it is praying for God's blessing on those who have offended you. I want to stop there and go back to my first husband. You know, he divorced me, and he told everybody else that yeah, I divorced him. But anyhow, then he remarried, and he brought her to my house, and they stayed a week. <laughs> And they left, and then they, a couple months later, come back and stayed again. And she said to me, why did you just get a divorce? I said, ask him. He's the one that did it. And then she said, why do you let him come here? I said, doesn't bother me any. He helped build the house. I guess he can come visit it. It didn't bother me. You know, that blew her mind. I forgave him for what he did. 45 years living with a man who, who he was perverted. And you and I, he told me when Teresa Ann was a month old, he said, I'm ne I don't love you. I'm never going to touch you again. I know that you don't want to have divorce in the family. We can live together in peace and raise the children. That's what we did. He went his way and I became a mother. He's not going, he wasn't, isn't worth going to hell over. Are you listening here? I bless my enemy, all right? And when he was here, he had a need. He needed a bed to lay in instead of going to a motel because he's too cheap to pay for. You know what I'm saying? So I gave him a bed to sleep in. Come on now, that didn't kill me. All right, so that's what Stephen did. Stephen not only let go of his offender's offense, but he said, Lord, do something good for them. Do not hold their offense against me. Oh, and by the way, when he died, he died in my house. And I was one of them that sat there day in and day out with him to pray for him and comfort him while he was dying. I'm still alive today. It did not kill me. I have a, I have a job to do here on this earth, and it's to spread the love of Jesus. It's not to sit and lick my wounds because somebody was messed up with the devil. Are you understanding this? God is here for me. He's always been for me, not against me. And God always takes care of my enemies. It might take a little while, but he does vindicate me. And I don't care if I get vindicated here on earth or not. Jesus wasn't, was he? It doesn't really matter a hoot to me. I'm here to do a good job for the Father, and I'm doing it, and I really don't care what people have to say. They don't know what they're talking about anyhow. I always tell everybody, boy, you're, you're in trouble with God. You just touched the apple of his eye. 
That's the way you should feel too. You are the apple of God's eye if you're really following him. And when people touch you, they touch the apple of his eye and they're in trouble. And God's then going to make them pay. Now, don't go around and just say, oh, God's going to make you pay. No, see, that's not right either. You want to see them hurt. What you need to pray, do is pray for them. All right, Stephen said in Acts 7, 59 and 60, and they stoned Stephen as he was calling on God and saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then Stephen knelt down and cried out with a loud voice, Lord, do not charge them with this sin. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. A forgiving heart is one that genuinely desires good for those who commit evil against us. That's a hard walk. That's a very hard walk and it's very hard to get there. This is just what we went through for about two years. But when I finally got there, then it ended. But I had to forgive them. All right? We also need to understand that lack of forgiveness blocks access to the kingdom and to miracle power. An unforgiving heart is a tox, toxin to the soul. It poisons the heart. Question. With all that God had placed in his word about forgiving those who do evil against us, why do we struggle with this issue of forgiveness? It's everywhere in the body of Christ. Everywhere. You and I watched that there, the thing about when people do, you know, kill people, I forgot what it's called. And I hear the women scream, I hope you rot in hell. I'll never forgive you. I hate you. And I think, oh, if you only knew what you just said. You just, you just put yourself in hell. You know, do what they do is they hate to the very bottom of their core. And then on the other hand, you'll, you'll hear a mother and a father say, we don't hold this against you and we forgive you. And may God bless you. That's God. The other is a Satan in his hate. To forgive literally means to release, to let go of. If you've, if, you know, if, if you say you forgive somebody and you keep thinking about them getting upset, you have not released it, let go of it. They were just words that you mouthed. And they never come from your heart. You cannot have joy in the morning if you do not forgive. Are you ready to release, let go of, so God can start blessing you? You know, when God told me, he said, that you can never have joy in the morning if you do not forgive. That's really true. Because sometimes if you really think about it, you, you lay awake most of the night thinking about what somebody did to you. Then when you get up in the morning, you're grouchy and grumpy, and all you can think about is what somebody did to you. There's no joy in you because you don't have forgiveness in your heart. If you don't have forgiveness, you don't have love. Who do you to tell me I don't have love? I'm not, Jesus is. And I'm going to tell you, love is not prevalent in the body of Christ. Neither is, un neither is forgiveness. A lot of unforgiveness. I've seen a lot of people that God's really had a great calling on their life. And they've lost it all because they won't forgive. You know, you guys do a lot of dumb things. <laughs> And I say, Father, please forgive them and give them more wisdom. I yeah, don't tell you to get, leave the church. You know, we do that in our families. Our families, we hurt each other. Come on. And, and we have to learn to forgive. We have to learn to forgive. How about you? Have you truly learned to forgive? I was sitting there doing praise and worship and the anointing was really strong and, and God said, daughter, he said, look around about you. You're not just here, but in the body of Christ in general. He said, if it's just a teaching, very few show up. But if it's noise to broad that there's miracles happen, you can't get enough, you don't have enough seats in the room. He said, they only come for miracles. They don't come to hear the truth. And that's right. I thought that, isn't that right? You know, because whenever we had miracles going all the time, and we was here every night, you know, and the place was packed out every night because God was on the move. 
But God wants us to get things together and get it right because that world out there is messed up. And when he starts sending it in, you know, it's going to be miracles. But are you going to be one of those that he's going to use to minister to those people? This is something each one of you have to ask yourself. And if you're walking in unforgiveness, he's not going to use you. He really isn't. He can't stand hate. He can't, he can't stand uh, bitterness. He can't stand any of those uh, dark things. Where are you at tonight? Can you, I mean, if somebody hurt you 10 years ago and you're still carrying it, can you release it tonight? Can you let go of it and give it to God? So that you, because when I forgive my husband, and the rest of my story is about him, is I went to him and knelt down in front of him and said, so I went, and all I did was talk about him. But my pastor said, you have to forgive it. Go and ask him for his forgiveness because you talked about him. So I went to him, knelt down at him, and I said, I, would like, I want you to forgive me for talking about you. Very smugly, he said, I don't know if I want to do that or not. My flesh wanted to reach up and slap him. But I stayed on my knees, and I said, God, give me the strength to really forgive him. And at that time, everything dropped off my shoulders. And I stood up and said, doesn't matter, and grinning, I mean, I was so happy. I said, I said, doesn't matter if you receive that or not, God did. He never forgave me of that. But he didn't go to heaven either. But I really don't care if he did. God saw my heart and God knew I meant what I said and God set me free. So if you're relying on somebody else to set you free, you're, you're wrong. Only one person can set you free, and that's Jesus. You, you can go to that person and say, you know, I really want, want you to forgive me. All right, we had a man here. He was a beautiful man of God. He, he died. And he, was say, he came to me, and he told me, he said, uh, my family won't forgive me for what I did years ago. And I said, I don't want to hear what you did. But I said, why don't you just go to your family? once again and ask him to forgive you. Well, he did, and I guess they just crucified him. He came back, and he cried, and he said, uh, they, wouldn't, they wouldn't forgive me. And I said, that's all right, you're free. And when he died, he died of cancer. When he died, I was sitting with him, and his family came in to see him. They lived out of town. I forgot where. But... Um, what they did to that man as he was laying there dying was unreal. What they said to him was unreal. And I didn't, didn't dare say anything because they had kicked me out of the house. So I just there and quietly prayed. And I reached over, took his hand and squeezed and he squeezed his back. He got a grin on his face and he was saying, it's okay. This doesn't bother me at all. And when he died, I thought they were going to spit his face in the coffin. Now, I don't know what he did but unless this family forgives them, they're not going to be in heaven because he is in heaven. He was a really godly man. He got born again. And you know, when you get born again, you can't go back and erase your past. It stays there. But we don't live there. What you did, you did. And you can, can't go back and undo it. But you don't let it go into your future and destroy you. And I was so glad that he didn't let it go into his future and destroy him. He died very peaceful in the arms of Jesus. Well, they stood there with hate on their faces looking at him. Doesn't matter what he did. Jesus knew it all and he asked God to forgive him. How about you tonight? Are you ready to be set free from your unforgiving heart? Are you really ready to give it all to Jesus? and let him set you free. The altar's open because without, if you have unforgiveness in your heart, you're not gonna to go to heaven and you can't be used. So the altar's open if you know that you have unforgiveness in your heart and you wanna both, you wanna be used by God and you wanna to go to heaven because you never know when you're gonna draw your last breath. Let this be the night that you give God all that ugliness that you have inside of you. You let God set you free. And whoever hurts you, you let God take care of them. 
That's not your job. That's God's job to vindicate you.